it's finally here. We all hoped for it, and I don't think anyone guessed that we'd get it this soon, but that's right. Today we're talking about Affinity Shape Builder tool, how to use it, what it's for, and why you need to start using it today. All right, let's get right into this. So with the new update, the Shape Builder tool will be found on your left toolbar, which I have moved my toolbar around. And if you wanna know how, make sure you check out the video up in the top there. So your Shape Builder tool, which is shortcut S, has this symbol right here. Now what the Shape Builder tool actually does is very similar to the Boolean tools, which you can see at the top here. So it can add, subtract, and it can actually do these other ones, but you have more control over what you're actually doing. So simply to use it, we've got our shapes here that we're gonna build. And first off, what we need to do is select all the shapes we want included in this combined shape. So we can do this by simply clicking and dragging and selecting all the shapes. Alternatively, you could also select all the layers in the layer panel as well. Head over to the Shape Builder tool, click on it, and you'll see that all the shapes will be segmented into these tiny shapes. And when you hover over with your mouse, you'll see that it'll be outlined red to show you that you're selecting that segment. Now say for example, we wanted to connect these three in the middle here and we wanted to add them together. All we would simply do is with our mouse is click and drag and you'll see that each area that we select will be highlighted. Now right now when we let go of the button, nothing happens. So this Shape Builder tool works slightly different to Illustrator's in that all we've done right now is selected the shapes that we want to either combine or delete. The way we actually do it is if we head up to the top here, we've got the add and we've got the minus. So if we hit add, we'll see that the three shapes are now combined into one. However, if we press the minus, all three shapes would disappear. So what we can do is if we already know that we're gonna add all the shapes together, we can hit the plus button straight away and you can see it's held down there. And then we could actually just draw and say we wanna add those together just like that. Or if we wanted to delete some of them, we'd select that one and just delete a few of them. Now with the Shape Builder tool right now, it's defaulted to using freehand, which when you draw, you can see that this is literally freehand drawn. But we do have some other options as well at the top. So we've got line, which when you click and drag, it is a specific line, which would be really good if you wanna get specific items that are in a line joined together. In my opinion, I reckon most people will just use freehand. It's probably gonna be the easiest. Now you've got marquee as well which works slightly different. So it's similar to like a selection box, but everything that is within that selection box will be selected. So if we click and drag like a selection box, every complete shape that's in the blue selection box will be selected. So as you can see here, the only complete shape that we've got is this one right in the middle here. Now, if we wanted to add this big red shape on the right, so this one, we would bring the selection down so it covers the whole of the shape. And now you can see that it's selected. Whereas if you only select part of it, it will not be selected. So if we drag it all the way across, now we've selected that, and now we can hit add or subtract, and it can do what we need to do. And we've built our little shape, and now we can separate that if we needed to. However, there is something about the Shape Builder tool that is important to know, and that it is destructive, which means that when you actually make your shape, so if we, let's say, make a shape like that, and add that together and we make our shape here. If we wanted to make any slight adjustments, we wouldn't be able to do it because what we're left with now are literal shapes, which are just basically curves, which we can edit by moving these lines and nodes. But if we were to think, hang on, this shape's a little bit big, what we would have to do is undo everything all the way back to before the Shape Builder tool was used and then maybe move our circle slightly, select it all, and then use the Shape Builder tool to create the shape that we want. So it is destructive, and a lot of times in design, you don't really wanna do the destructive thing. Sometimes you do, so in this case, let's say I wanted a shape, and that's all I wanted, and I knew I wasn't gonna to need to change it, then that's fine. But there is a sort of roundabout way that we can get around this to make it less destructive. It still is destructive, but it's a little bit easier. So if we select all our shapes like we usually do, head over to our Shape Builder tool, and up at the top here, we've got Create New Shape from Selected Area. Now, if we select this, and now if we create our shape, so let's say we wanna add these together, we've created our shape. So if you look in the layer panel here, we've got our shape here, but we've still got our three circles. So if we were now going to hide these three circles, we now have our shape, but we also if we needed to, and we thought, hang on, that's not the right shape we want at all, we could unhide our original circles, select them all, and try it again. And instead, maybe we wanted that sort of shape. And again, you can see that our circles are untouched, 
but we have our combined shape that we wanted. So it's not the easiest of things, but let's say you made a whole nother design and then you thought, hang on, I don't like that shape. I want to do that again. But rather than starting again, we could just hide that or even delete it, bring back our circles, move what we need to, reselect everything, shape builder tool it. And because we have that create new shape from selected area selected, our original three circles are untouched. We can just hide them again and we have our shape. So it's not as destructive because we still have our originals, but it still is technically destructive. But yeah, it's just something to be aware of. And that's a little roundabout way that we can kind of get around it. Or alternatively, what we could do instead, rather than using the shape builder tool is we could also create a compound shape. So if we head over to layer and create compound, we can create our compound shape. Now we can use these Boolean operations to create a sort of shape that we want. And in this case, what we can do is we can actually re-edit our shape by moving things around within this compound. So we can still see the effects happening, but it is non-destructive because our circles are still exactly how we left them. They're just within the compound shape for these edits. So it's non-destructive. However, it may not be as great at making the shapes that you want. However, the shape builder tool is more destructive, but you can get a lot more control and a lot better shapes with it. So the shape builder tool has really brought out a whole new set of things because now we can grab these curves and actually create different segments and join these two together and maybe join these two together and create all the little shapes that we want. We can create some really interesting shapes. Look at that, very abstract. So there you go. Now, if you didn't understand why so many of us wanted the shape build at all, now you've seen how awesome it is and how much you can do with it. I'm sure now you understand. Hopefully that gives you a nice overview of how the shape builder tool works. It's definitely going to speed up workflows and make a lot of people's lives a lot easier. Like I said, that create new shape from selected areas actually makes this so much more editable and overall a whole lot better than illustrators. That's right. I said it. Now, if I've missed anything or if you've got any questions, make sure you drop them in the comments below. And while you're down there, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe for more videos like this. If you haven't already, make sure you check out this video right here. And as always, I've been Brown Bear. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.